the woman on the top uh, to your left, that's her first arrest. <clears throat> Eight arrests later follow that picture. <clears throat> the second row, her first arrest. Eight arrests later. When I first saw a whole page full of women like that, I thought they were all different women. And I learned that it was one woman and eight arrests later. And they're victims of trafficking. So I don't know any human being. When you look at someone like this, there's a real problem in their life. Um, in some of these cases, this is what we're trying to do by the time we get them. So, you know, the average lifespan of a prostitute is seven years. The average age of um, commercial sex trafficking is 13. They're not even old enough to drink before they die. Sex trafficking victims, any person under the age of 18 and involved in a commercial sex act where someone else is economically benefiting off the child. It occurs when children are kidnapped, coerced, forced, manipulated, or appeared <coughs> to have entered the sex industry by choice. I like that. Appeared to have entered the sex industry by choice. And a lot of our young women, this is a very sexualized generation. You know, I don't think I have the um, PowerPoint picture of the whole series of, of very young children in pimp-type clothes. There's even a line called Pimpins, which is totally disgusting. So we're, we're, very, we're sexualizing each generation. And so our young, our young girls are thinking, you know, sex is it. No, it's not. What happened to my generation? And the message, you know, we've let this go. And this is one way we can correct that, along with giving uh, trafficking and slavery endings. So that's a real um, desire of mine, especially as a woman who went through the military. Um, I'm the only four-year graduate in my family, and I love people, I love kids, I'm a teacher, and I have no idea how I got to be a state representative. <laughs> but the journey in my life is that I love learning. You know, I've, I've really had great opportunities, people who supported me at every level, whether it's my parents, the community. And what, what's really happening today to our children? So the health and well-being of our children needs to be really addressed in many, many issues. And I, as an educator who came to really work on education issues at the state level, this problem came to me. And I thought, boy, no wonder. You know, I worked in the urban center, inner city of Toledo. And these children are really challenged in their families and in their homes, the socioeconomic, if some communities have no jobs, guess what? Their family gets into this business. And that's that's the black and the white of it. We need to really care about all children. Okay, and then we have, um, we of course know street prostitution, strip clubs, private dancing, massage or sport services, convention centers, sporting events, tourist destinations, motels and truck stops are the frequented of places for trafficking. And there's um, legislation for communities to address the massage parlors on Polaris Project, Washington, D.C., and Warren, um, Ohio, has started to address the resolutions to really clean up the massage parlors. For some reason, you know, Toledo seems to be the mecca for recruiting underage girls. Warren is the mecca for massage parlors, where people come from New York and Detroit, Chicago, and they go to Warren. So we're just we're discovering that and we're cleaning it up. So there's legislation for communities to pass res resolutions. 
And of course, there's going to be a battle. They're going to tell you, no, you can't do it, but do it anyway. And let the lawyers battle it out. By that time, people are aware of what's happening in their community. They know, you, they know they're not wanted. And they really are aware of the types of businesses that are coming around. Human trafficking by the numbers in the United States, 100,000 American minors are trafficked in the sex tra trade each year, and 200,000 are at risk. The average age is 12 to 14 when they're involved, their first involvement. Uh, human trafficking by numbers <clears throat> in Ohio, 2,879 estimated number of youth born in Ohio who are at risk for commercial sexual exploitation. In this number right here, 1,078 are the number of youths born in Ohio who have been sexually exploited over the course of a year at any one time. And that's a very conservative number. Um, the TIPS Commission, the Trafficking and Person Study Commission, um, you know, had a subcommittee. And Dr. Celia Williamson, who's from the University of Toledo, we were good friends before all this, um, she came up with a, a formula kind of a landmark formula of how to quantify the numbers, and we feel that that's a very conservative number. Then 3,437 estimated number of foreign-born Ohio citizens who are at risk for trafficking in labor or sex trade, 783 of whom are actually being trafficked at any one time. Possible victim identifiers, hotel room keys, numerous school absences, that's the tardy, False IDs and lying about age, teenage dating, uh, teens dating much older, abusive, or controlling men, having large amounts of cash, jewelry, new clothes, recurrent STD or STIs, and or need for pregnancy tests, uh, signs of physical assault, including branding or tattooing, broken bones, black eyes, etc. Um, just this week or this month, the Department of Education is doing webinars. They're doing webinars for teachers for educators. Um, a lot of physicians are getting their training. Law enforcement, they're getting their training. So anyone you know um, in, really in that field, you need to let them know. The um, website, for Attorney General's website, is very informative for anyone who wants to learn more. They go through little pieces. They actually take a test at the end, see if you paid attention. So it's a very good way of getting caught up on, on this uh, issue. There's a lot of beatings by pimps. <clears throat> a lot of the um, emergency room physicians and nurses are becoming very familiar now with what trafficking looks like. And ask the questions. Separate, you know, the victim with maybe that older man or that person that's there. And then we'll have an appropriate response. We'll be able to rescue them. The branding um, on some of the uh, victims, Daddy's Girl, Wayne's Girl, these are all cases that the FBI is working right now. Why has Ohio become a hub of human trafficking? It's a close proximity to international airports, Canada, the East Coast, and military bases. More truck stops than any other state. It's prevalence of agricultural farms, massage parlors, strip clubs, where trafficking victims are enslaved. Large immigrant communities where it's easy to hide foreign-born trafficking victims. More colleges, universities than any other state. Now, <coughs> I've talked to a lot of young people. And a lot of young people who are now graduated and they're working on this issue. Throughout the United States, there's a party called the Pimp and Hope Party. Sexualizing our generation, we're accepting this type of culture. It should absolutely end across the United States on any college campus. The sororities need to be involved on in what this is because they're feeding right into it. You know, their, their acceptance level. And they're going to be having, you know, families too. They're going to be in professional lives. So I really think, you know, AAUW, I'm sure you're associated to some sororities. This should be a national platform that you can reach the national level sororities. And evidently, they have to have a resolution to do this. That's what I found out. I thought I could just call them and say, stop it. Don't do this anymore, you know. Talk to, talk to your sorority sisters. 
this generation. You know, we need those kinds of discussions. Pimp control traffickers, pimps are masters of the art of sedu seduction. They're able to identify the vulnerabilities of a specific child and exploit them. And I guess the key for you to remember is vulnerable. Who's vulnerable? You know, they, they recruit people in the mall. They recruit their victims in the mall. They'll say, oh, you're really pretty. And if the girl says, oh, you think so? For goodness sakes, she's a target. Another girl says, get out of here, you know. Or, you know, if she has a self-esteem, a strong self-esteem, he'll leave, he'll leave her alone. But it's the vulnerable ones that they go looking for. And then they have a hierarchy within their um, criminal enterprise of the bottom bitches. And sometimes the victims become the traffickers. They've crossed over. And there are cases where there are victims, but there are also traffickers. So the FBI has to decide what they're going to do with them. But they also recruit in the juvenile jails. Um, you know, they want to become your friend. They invite you to a party. If you see some of the some of the um, stories or movies, uh, America's Most Wanted had their two-hour special two week two Fridays ago. Excellent. I wish we would have had five years. Ago. But there are a variety of different cases of young women and men <clears throat> that have been entrapped in this. And once seduced, pimps use torture tactics to control their victims. Such tactics consistently lead to complete obedience and a broken down of a personal agency and autonomy. Um, just like domestic violence, you know, the power control situation happens. But even more so if you're 13 or 14, your social emotional development is not there. So they're even more uh, vulnerable. Again, vulnerable. Such tactics, um, okay, pimps use the increased glamorization of pimp home culture. My goodness, they have parties on campuses across the United States to raise money for nonprofits. This kills me. Um, as well as cultural acceptance of demand for child victims to help maintain control of the child. Well, you, you can tell that really bugs me. You guys need to do something about this. Get really mad. Call them up, write letters, find out, you know, do you have these? If you have them, don't let them have them anymore. Um, the power and control, what is human trafficking? There's coercion and threats, threatens to do physical harm, threatens to harm family, threatens to shame victim to community. The shame factor is huge. It's hard to overcome something like this. Threatens to report to police and immigration. Intimidation, harms or kills others to show force, to also kill pets. <clears throat> Teresa Flores is a victim that often speaks in Ohio. She was also featured on the two-hour special, America's Most Wanted. Um, she was entrapped at, uh, I think, 15, and they killed her dog as a, you know, as a string of threats for her to keep her silent, which she did. Displays or uses weapons, destroys property, harms children, use lies about police involvement in the trafficking situation, the emotional abuse, um, humiliates in front of others, calls names, play, plays mind games, as you can imagine, also isolation. Minimizing and denying and blaming makes light of abuse or situation, denies that anything illegal is occurring, places blame on victim for the trafficking situation. And when you hear from law enforcement, especially the FBI, they often say that the victims don't realize they're victims. So as part of our legislation or policy effort, we're going to immediately, um, in their first step, let them know what their rights are, that their rights are being violated. 
and what are those rights? If you're working with a 14, 15 year old victim, what do they know? So they, a lot of times if you can't get them the help that they need right away, especially if you're a social worker, and we're not addressing this response appropriately as a society, they, they may go in a situation that's not appropriate and they'll run away and they may run away right back to that point. Believe it or not, that does happen. So our response needs to be the correct response. <clears throat> the sexual abuse forces victims to have sex with multiple people in a day, uses rape as a weapon and means of control, treats victim as an object used for monetary gain. Normalizes sexual violence in selling sex. And my question, along with um, Judge Zemelman, is, you know, if you um, don't pay, if you just rape a child, you're a sex offender. You go to jail for a long time, right? Society has an appropriate response to that. If you pay for sex, it's a misdemeanor. If you pay to rape a child, it's a misdemeanor. That's what we have to boil this down to, folks. Think about it. Think about it. And there are a lot of cases now where the sex offenders who serve jail time and they're out, they're buying sex. They're just paying for it now. Because then they won't really get in trouble. There's something wrong here. So we need to correct that. And I know you're going to do it. Using privilege treats victims like a servant, defines gender roles to make subservient, make someone subservient. subservient. Um, uses certain victims to control other victims. So that's where the hierarchy with the criminal enterprise of commercial sex trafficking, they have bottom bitches and other roles that, that people play um, to keep everyone in line and destroys destroys important papers. And before I passed the legislation in this last General Assembly, um, labor trafficking was not against the law either. So we were able to really correct that. And when I looked at this six years ago, I'll never forget the day one of my staff members and every one of them, whether they're here with me or not, they're long gone into other careers. They deserve a lot of credit, but there wasn't one word in Ohio Revised Code against slavery, which is why the pimps and the traffickers have been getting away with it. But now we've changed that. Let's see if we can get through. So where do pimps recruit? I talked about shopping malls, juvenile halls, shelters, concerts, library, bus stops, internet websites, it's a big one, like MySpace. The social networking is huge, it's growing every day more and more into the trafficking situation. But here's a note that the Toledo FBI agents found in a restroom. Girls restroom. Must be 18 and up. Looks like she was maybe 13 when she wrote this. You're invited. Candy. Looks like candy. Money. And here's a number. Bachelor parties. Um, escorting. Private and safe. Guaranteed large amount of money in New York City, up to seven thousand in a week, and go home to chill with money. Call for more more info. It's a recruitment note. <clears throat> Who do pimps recruit? Black, white, Native American, Hispanic, child with low self-esteem, child with no purpose, no direction, or they're going through children's services. There's a lot of trauma in their lives. Run away, thrown away children children. Our society throws away a lot of children. We do. Child with a boy. And the reason I put this here, because this is an official pimp conference they have in Chicago every year. That's how bold they are, because we're not paying attention. Average age I've talked about is 13, life is Expectancy <clears throat> after becoming a prostitute is seven. Major cases reveal over 25% of victims were recruited as juveniles. Um, many of the prostitutes that are 
currently to be adult prostitutes, probably had child abuse, they were victims and during their teenage years. Victimology, 83% have been threatened with a weapon, 82% physically assaulted, 68% been raped, 59% have been raped four more times, 49% reported that pornography has been made of them in prostitution, 75% in drug abuse problem, 57% were sexually abused as children, 88% want to leave prostitution. 77% of sexually exploited youth in Ohio will only go on to participate in adult street prostitution if they don't get intervention. But we do now put the proper response in with our communities. And again, there's, there's a huge shame situation when you're trapped into that. It's very hard to um, address those issues. And why don't victims seek help? That's another question over and over and over. Captivity, confinement, and isolation. Many of them are, are not able to get help. They use threat, violence, fear, shame, self-blame, and hopelessness, dependency, fear of arrest, and incarceration. And many times they don't realize they are victims. Women involved in prostitution fare worse than other women offenders. Based on a survey of 1,036 women offenders in Lucas County, <coughs> uh, women wit witnessed violence growing up, 52% versus 39%. Uh, didn't complete high school, 46.5% versus 28.7%. Earned enough to support self, 14% versus 33%. Live in an area with a lot of crime, Huge, 70% versus 40%. So what's that word I used before, vulnerable? <coughs> Live in an area with a lot of drugs, 75% versus 46%. Think about this, are there certain neighborhoods in your community that are allowed to be kind of a drug area? East Toledo. That's where I had to move to stay in my job. I live in an alley with no street lights, and I don't have a full in garage. And I'm renting a place. But I've decided, you know, I think Toledo has just decided East Toledo and maybe certain parts of North Toledo, those are where all the bad people are going to be. It's where all the drugs are going to happen. There's a crack house right across the street. And believe me, the police know that. And the neighbors that have been there for three, four generations who are not giving up their property in the neighborhood are fighting back. So there are people in these neighborhoods, these statistics are women. Women live in these neighborhoods. They're vulnerable. They're entrapped. You know, they're not getting the kind of education or support. And it's really hard when your families are falling apart to continue education. I'm a public school teacher, I'm proud of it, and I know how to teach reading, and I'm good. And I would rather go into the hardest areas because I know how to help them. But when they go home, it breaks my heart in the communities because that's where most of the victims are coming from. And that's an indictment on us. Currently, they're involved in domestic violence, 23.9% versus 17.2%. History of domestic violence, 51% versus 29%. It's huge. They're already trauma. They're already traumatized. And they're not getting the kind of help that they need. It's not there. Experienced rape, 70.2% versus 38.4%. So, I mean, this, this is something that you really could reflect on women, university women, educated women. What's going to happen to the next generation? We're, we're doing 911 triage right now, trying to address this problem. But we're just going to put fingers in the dice, really.
if we don't come up with a long-term sustainable um, way to reach all of our children when they can be reached. It's hard to reach them at 13, 14 when no one's there for them. Their families are divorced, there are no jobs, they're living, you know, house to house, unsafe neighborhood, drug deals happening all the time, needles in the yard. And then they then they go after the, our kids at the mall. It's fun. That's how bold they are. But I really think it's part of a long term way of addressing how we want to raise children. The typical street prostitute contacts with law enforcement, the number of contacts with law enforcement. This is between 2001 and 2009. The loitering and loitering to solicit 98 times. Soliciting 34, possession of drug paraphernalia 14, obstructing official business 1, disorderly conduct 9, drug abuse 5, public indecency 3, criminal trespass.